there. It's Anne at Life LDC. It's uh, June the 6th. It's time for uh, my May update. I'm running late again this month. I, uh, time just, I know I keep saying this, time just keeps flying. So this is going to be a quick update because it's uh, cold and dull outside. It's time to take the dogs for a walk. They're telling me it's time to take the dogs for a walk, but I wanted to take just a little bit of time to do my quick May update. True confession, I did not knit one stitch on my Musa uh, Fair Isle big tabard. It was a busy month. Hubby was away. I was in charge of everything here. Dogs, house, garden. May was a big, big month for the garden. So I really didn't get anything done. But what I did do is I kept myself busy with this Marie Wallen. She calls it a snood. Now, I think of a snood as something that goes over your head and sits like this, but this one actually comes down and goes over your shoulders and makes a nice big warm cowly thing and you can wrap it up, uh, wrap yourself up in it for the winter. This is made out of um, Rowan British Sheep Breeds, uh, chunky discontinued yarn. I love it. I played yarn chicken. This was I think a 24 um, row repeat of this cable. I got to row 23. I did not have enough for row 24 and I used the very last remaining little bit to do the half of the seam and I used the tail from the cast on to do the other half of the seam. So the seam is not very pretty. I must tell you that the seam is not pretty at all. But when it's on, who's really gonna notice? Especially if you put that seamy bit wherever you decide to crunch up your your snood. So anyway, I'm looking forward to wearing this. I think it'd be look, looking great over my brown leather jacket or over a denim uh, denim jacket. Uh, it's nice and warm. Love it. So this came out of Marie's, do I have it here? Yes, I do. Her Lakeland collection. I'm, tr I'm actually, my personal little goal is to have something out of each of Marie's collections. So this is uh, a design out of the Lakeland collection. Ah, look what I did. This is all that I've got left. Two little pieces of yarn. I used every smidgen I s split, spliced, or spit spliced, however you want to put it. Moisture, friction to join the, the each ball because I had a couple of little balls, but I weighed it all and I did have 398 grams, not 400 grams, but that's all I have left. The Kendall Snood, Snood, Snood from Marie Wallen's Lakeland. Loved it. It was an easy, um, easy cable knit. It was a quick cable knit. And if you want to make yourself some gorgeous cables um, to go around your shoulders, this is a great, great design finished object for May. I resisted this publication, but uh, finally I gave in because I just could not resist. It's by Kate Davies and it's the West Highland Way. Knit, read, walk. There are gorgeous designs in here. I'm just gonna quickly flip through because you can see all these on Ravelry and people have been knitting them up like crazy. But what I love about this is it's um, a collaboration between Kate and her husband. He took the pictures, she did the designs and wrote the little essays that go along with each uh, section, with each design. So for example, it starts off Let me just find the first one. Well, she just starts off with an overview of the West Highland Way and uh, talks about how the landscape and the colors of the landscape really affect her knitting. And 
I'm being invaded here. So, so the designs and words are by Kate and photography by Tom Barr. She also puts a little, as, as a lot of writers do, a little excerpt from other people's work. These are the things that pull me to the silent places and the windy places and the places that are open and free. Bob Grieve, The Open Road. My parents were both Scottish, so this was, um, this was a tempting book for me. I'd sort of said a little while ago I wasn't going to buy any more hardcover books, but, you know, don't, don't ever say never because, you know, you're just not going to ever, <laughs> you just never know what's going to happen in life. This was just too uh, much to resist. I wanted to hold this in my hand. I wanted to read the, uh, the essays because this is about Scotland, a long distance walking route, the West Highland Way. I'd love to do it sometime. But for now, I'm just going to read all about it. Enjoy the absolutely gorgeous pictures. Look at the, uh, the collection of designs. And I have to tell you this, Sheeling. I don't know what's gotten into me lately. These last few years I've just been making blankets like crazy. Look at this. It's absolutely gorgeous. And I don't know if you read the blog post that uh, Kate wrote about trundling down to the, the lock with this outdoor chaise lounge that her and Tom bought and meeting people and, and people looking at them like they're, they're crazy because they were dragging this down to the frozen lock to take pictures with. But pictures are gorgeous the uh, the patterns are gorgeous everything's is this book is just gorgeous so do yourself a favor and treat yourself it you don't even have to knit anything out of it it's a really good book just to read so highly recommend it Since I'm um, not knitting Farrell right at the moment, I needed something to knit. And right now I'm uh, checking out uh, MHZ, MDZ, anyway, I'll put a link below. It's one of these streaming services and it specializes in European um, like TV dramas and that. So everything has subtitles, subtitles, and complicated knitting don't really go. You miss you either miss a lot of your knitting or you miss a lot of the storyline. So I decided I needed to cast on something that was um, easy to knit with, you know, easy to watch TV and knit. I will get back to my Musa. Bear with me, I just need a little bit of a break. So um, the, one of the yarns that I've just been intrigued with with Rowan is the New Valley Tweed. Mm, tweed, love it. Fingering weight, it's absolutely gorgeous. Like, look at the shades. So I've got three different shades here. And I've actually started something. I'll just show it to you. Here are my three shades. Love them. And I've started. It's a garter stitch uh, project. You know, garter stitch takes a lot of knitting, so this is going to be fun, but I will show you what I'm doing. Garter stitch short rows to make this gorgeous shawly wrappy thing. Now I didn't go, f I've uh, t used two of the three colors shown but I where it's the rusty red I'm going to use the dark brown. So it starts off with uh, casting on 325 stitches I think. That's a lot of stitches. Yes, 325 stitches. And you and so to cast on, I put markers every 50 stitches or so. So when I when it says to knit X amount and then wrap and turn, I actually go along, I count along 
and I mark the stitch that needs to be wrapped on the next row. So every uh, second row is just a knit back. As you can see, it's really, 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 really stuck onto this needle. But the, see this little marker here? This nice lime green marker. I know that on this row, that is the stitch that I wrap and turn at. So it's fairly simple. I just have to, when I, when I feel a marker, I just have to look at what, what color the marker is, and then I'll know to wrap and turn. So I think this will be pretty good for TV watching. It's going to take me a while, might be my summer knit. It's going to be easily uh, transportable. So I'm looking forward to getting that done. And it's the design is in the Rowan Valley Tweed book that came out last fall. This was a new yarn last fall. Right now, this yarn came out last fall. There's 10 colors. And I've heard there's new colors for this fall. I didn't tell you, okay? But, uh, going to be fun. This has got some great designs in it. I also am thinking about doing Roden, which is a very plain pullover. It reminds me of the Relax uh, design on Ravelry. It's a straight body with just a little sort of like a cap out from the body and then the sleeves come down from the cap. It, it gets rid of a lot of that uh, extra yardage underneath your, your arm when you have an oversized uh, sweater. So it's oversized but not too terribly oversized. So I'm thinking about doing that in the basic color. And sorry, I don't remember the names but I will put the color names in the notes below. I'm doing this as sort of a mad rush today because I really have to get this doing done. I don't want it to carry on any farther into June. So that's my work in progress right now. And as I say, I will get along to Musa. I keep having to move over because every time I move, Blackie takes my spot. He likes he likes to snuggle, don't you? Uh, last month I introduced giveaways to Life LDC, and uh, there were three giveaways last month. One is for a copy of Marie Wallen's uh, Feral Patch Cushion. One is for a Gleaner. And one is for one of uh, Knitting I Love's, Barbara at Knitting I Love's little felted uh, needle pouches. I am going to uh, do the random comment picker. There's a soft uh, website that does that for you. Put in your, the URL of your, of your uh, video and give it a breakdown and it adds on, it picks uh, random numbers for you. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to list the, I'm going to, put the winner's names down here. So the winner of the Marie Wallen pattern is, insert name here, the winner of the Gleaner is, insert name here, and the winner of the uh, Knitting I Love felted needle pouch in the color of their choice is, insert here, and I will do that uh, before I finish editing this video. Sorry, I meant to do that first, but again, life is just uh, getting in the way. Um, May's extremely busy. You know what it's like when you're trying to get the garden done. We had a huge windstorm come through here, like I think five days before the hubby left. And I was left with this disaster of a yard. <laughs> and, uh, uh, the town very nicely offered to pick up all our branches. All we had to do was get them to the road. So I spent a few days doing that while he was away, trying to get the yard cleaned up. And then, of course, the lawn needed cut. So, I know, enough of the excuses. It's just been a really busy time. So, keeping in the vein of giveaways, 
this month's giveaway. I did a, a, a video review of the Rowan subscription copy. This is what you get when you get a Rowan subscriber. So in the mail you get this nice cardboard box that love, protects your Rowan magazine beautifully. And in the box, and this there is a separate video on my playlist of what comes in a Rowan subscription box. You get the Rowan subscriber magazine, little hard copy magazine, and you get the copy of your Rowan magazine, all nicely protected in this beautiful box. And I have to say, Rowan has seems to have problems with delivery. And I'm going to make this uh, open only to Canadian uh, viewers because this is going to be serious postage to send this out. So if you're a Canadian viewer and you want to be considered for the draw for the Rowan's, this Rowan Magazine 63 subscriber copy, leave a comment below. Twice now in a row, my subscriber copy hasn't arrived. Now I have to tell you, Rowan are wonderful about sending out another copy, and that's why I ended up with two this time. Last time it was hurricane season and I swear all the Canadian magazines ended up, they were all sopping wet and that's why we all got uh, replacement copies. So this one, as soon as I complained about it, I knew, I just knew that I was gonna end up with two. And sure enough, the replacement copy arrived and then a week later, my regular subscriber copy. I don't know where it had gone to, where, you know, what happens to it? But I think, they, I think they're sent from Poland, I'm not sure. From Kab, K-A-A-B, post office box, whatever. From Praha, so Prague. Praha? Prague? I don't know. I'm not very good at geography. <laughs> So, if you would like to get this copy of Rowan Magazine 63, that's the summer uh, edition of Rowan Magazine for 2018, check it out and then, and then I'm going to suggest if you like it and when you feel it, it's a nice substantial package to arrive, you might want to subscribe for Rowan Magazine, Magazine 64 because it's Rowan's Magazine's 40th anniversary. Actually, it's not Rowan Magazine's 40th anniversary. It's Rowan's 40th anniversary. So their Ruby anniversary. So just a heads up, get the magazine because it's going to be a doozy. Okay. They, they know how to do um, uh, a celebratory magazine. I downstairs, I have um, Rowan Magazine 50. For subscribers, it came as a hard copy. Um, don't think that's going to happen this this time, but uh, but it, it, Rowan just knows how to do it, and I think they've got some really good stuff up their sleeve for to celebrate 40 years of Rowan. So even if you don't win the subscriber copy, think about subscribing just to get uh, to be to be in on the 40th anniversary celebration. Okay, so leave a comment below and tell me if you have ever been a Rowan subscriber and maybe why you aren't now. So don't, don't enter this if you are a Rowan subscriber. Enter it if you're not a Rowan subscriber. So if you are a Rowan subscriber and you know someone who isn't, get them to enter. So talk up the Rowan subscription. If you uh, know someone that maybe you'd like to encourage to be a subscriber, get them to enter. Okay? Okay, so... Enter yourself or enter, get one of your friends to enter. And please, only Canadians for this giveaway because uh, I figured out this is, I think, about $18 to, to post. Okay, so, and, and I pay the postage on everything myself. <laughs> okay, thanks very much. And we don't want to use my yarn money on postage, right? <laughs> so, enter down below. Thank you. Knitters always like to know what other knitters are wearing. So today I have got on um, a sweater in Rowan denim. 
it's starting to, you can see that the denim color is starting to wear off, particularly on the sleeves because there's, there's a pattern on them. This was, uh, geez, I can't remember her name. Amy Herzog design in one of the Rowan magazines. It was right after she did that, the Amy Herzog knit a custom sweater knit along for Rowan. And I love this design. It is very plain, the body's plain. It's got um, raglan sleeves, raglan sleeve set-ins. The sleeves are textured. You see the texture on the sleeves? The sleeves have grown a little bit so I wear them worn up, but I actually really quite like them worn up. They're long. They're not too long, but they're pretty long. And what I love about it, and this is one of the things I picked up from Amy's um, knit along. I didn't do the knit along, but I studied it. Was she puts these back darts, and I don't know if you can see them because this is denim and it's dark. But the back darts, what they do is they pull in the back of your sweater. So instead of your sweater being this big wide thing, it ever so slightly tucks in where you, you have less body at the back and it makes everything sit really well. So I love this sweater and I will put the details down below. And you can't beat Rowan denim. People talk about they don't like to knit with Rowan denim, but you can knit it on... Aki! <laughs> no, it's okay, sweetie. You can you knit it on a decent sized needle because it, you wash it in hot water and you throw it in the washing machine and it shrinks. So you can't beat it for easy care. And what I do in between um, actual washings is I throw it in the dryer on a steam refresh and it makes it it makes it uh, shrink a little bit in and gives it a little bit more you know shape in between wearings. So it's quite chilly here today and I was out for cough, a coffee morning with a friend so I went out with my Rowan denim sweater on it. I can see her looking at it because she's not a knitter so anyway. So there you go. Well, today's uh, Fair Isle demonstration in my year of knitting Fair Isle, I thought since I'm not actually knitting Musa I thought what could I talk about and then I, th I thought about edgings, corrugated rib because corrugated rib is something that's pretty um, traditional with ferrule, and it's something that you, you see a lot, not all the time, but mostly on ferrule knitting. And corrugated ribbing is where you take two colors on each row. One color is the knit stitches and one color is the purl stitches. This one here has uh, the purl stitches changing also because the and because the yarns are so close together that, that they're so such beautiful shades, the purl stitches don't look. Sometimes purl stitches when you're changing color they don't look the best. This one also has uh, both knit and purl stitches changing at the same time. Hmm. That's interesting because a lot of people, a lot of designers that when they uh, design with corrugated ribbing, they do the knit stitches in the different colors and they do exactly the same color in the purl stitches throughout the whole knit. And then that way it doesn't, um, you don't get that, that blippy bit between the two stitches. So looking at these, that's, that's sort of contrary to what I was thinking. These both change, uh, change colors in the knit and the purl stitches and I'll just come closer and let you see the actual ribbing. And you can see both the knit and the purl stitches, the shades are changing. I'm gonna move this over here because it seems to focus better over here, there we go. And I'll put the details on these two designs on the screen for you. And same thing with this one. Let's 
that. Now corrugated ribbing has no stretch. So if you want, if you like a sweater that sits snugly around your hips, some people do, corrugated ribbing is not the thing to do because it really has no stretch. Um, it, it sort of stays the way it is. So talking about corrugating, corrugated ribbing, I uh, knit this as a lot of us knitters did knit this Piri Fleur's hat by Kate Davies. I did mine in Jameson, Shetland Spindrift. Uh, the original was done in uh, Rowan Fine Tweed. And I love this hat so much that I went on to, I don't know if I can put it on. Oh, no, I've got my hair pulled up so <laughs> it doesn't really suit. So we won't try that on today. So I was so inspired by that, that I went on to make matching fingerless gloves and I used I've got a little fingerless glove glove freebie pattern on uh, Ravelry and I just adapted the shape and put the Piri Fleur's flower design okay lucky boy uh, and made them to match and then this was when the Inspira cowl was all the rage and the Inspira cowl is just a big piece of corrugated ribbing and so I used the same colors from my from the Piri Fleur's hat and used it to make the Inspira cowl. So this is a great uh, corrugated rib exercise piece if you want to knit corrugated rib because the whole thing is just corrugated rib. So in my case for corrugated ribbing, I'm a thrower, so I find uh, knitting and or purling with my right hand just fine. So I would prefer my knit stitches to be dominant in corrugated rib. So I knit the knit stitch and always bring it from below and my, then I bring the purl, purl yarn up and over do my purls, take it back, and go back underneath with my knit stitch so that the knit stitches are dominant. Again, this is all this dominant knitting thing. You can try both ways. That's just the way it works for me. If you were a, a continental knitter, you would have one yarn on either finger. And I'm thinking because the purl is, is always harder, you'd have the purl yarn on your dominant finger and the knit stitch would be coming from below. Okay, Get you, this is all, all um, your own personal knitting style will, will uh, determine how you do this, but it's the same as stranded knitting. You set the path of your yarns and you keep them all going on the same path. And so that's what I'm going to demonstrate today because I started a, another um, Merry Dancer's hat. And because the last one was too small, I'm going to insert a picture. Here because that hat that I, the previous hat that I knit had has been gifted on to a very uh, deserving and adorable uh, friend of mine and she looks great in the hat so good for her but I really want one so I picked out some more yarn from Anne's great re room of requirement of stash stash room of requirement and I've started another one so I'm I'm coming up I've done a bit of the um, corrugated rib and I will demonstrate how to knit corrugated rib for this month's demonstration 
Here's my corrugated rib. I've got two strands of yarn here, just like in ferrile. This corrugated rib is sort of like ferrile ribbing. The purl stitches are done in the navy, and they will always go above, traveling to the front, knitting, purling the stitches, and traveling to the back. The pink, the nice little pale pink color, is always going to travel below because I want the knit stitches to be dominant. So I bring the purl yarn to the front, purl to the back, knit stitches, the knit yarn comes from below. Now, if I was doing this two-handed, my right hand is my dominant hand, so I'll use that for the purl stitches. Take the yarn back, knit two stitches with my left hand, purl with my right, and the big thing you have to remember is always to take that pearl yarn back to the wrong side of your knitting. And if you do forget and, and strand it across the front, you can just drop the stitches off and, and flick it to the back. Okay, I am not a continental knitter, but I've got the pearl, pearl color here and the knit color on my middle finger. So I'm going to bring the knit color up to knit two stitches. And then to purl, you bring the yarn up. Can you see that? Go into your purl stitch. Wrap the round a yarn around and bring it towards your body. And I am definitely not a continental knitter. I'm definitely not a continental purler, I'll tell you that. Take the yarn back, and the knit comes from below on your middle finger. Now I'm getting sort of intrigued by this continental purling, so let's try that again. Your finger comes up. The yarn, the, the right needle goes underneath it into the purl stitch. You bring that back towards you. Ah, that's much better. Again. Towards you. Drop that finger back and knit with your middle finger. You see what I'm saying? You know, it, it, this is going to be a highly personal thing. If you choose to sit and, there you go, that's, that's enough continental for me. If you choose to sit and literally go, purl, bring this one up, purl. Put it back down, drop it, bring your knit yarn from below, knit two stitches, Drop it, give, it, give your purl stitches a little snug, bring it up, purl. You don't have to, to hold them both at the same time. It doesn't matter. Sorry, I'm going off, off screen here. But you see what I mean? Corrugated rib makes a... Corrugated rib makes a beautiful edging, and it's it's a nice firm edging. It gives you the same weight of of uh, fabric as a, a ferrule piece of knitting. I really like a corrugated rib on a piece of ferrule, a ferrule garment. So try the uh, try corrugated ribbing. As I said, the Inspira cowl is a great example. Or if you'd like to try a little bit of Fair Isle, try my um, Fair Isle uh, 
fingerless mitts pattern that's on Ravelry. I'll put the link down here, the name down here for you. And it has a plain rib, but you could change it to a corrugated rib if you'd like. Okay. Sorry this has been such a quick little demo, but uh, the outside is calling and uh, the dogs want to go for a walk. So until next time, happy knitting and thanks very much for dropping by. I really have to say thank you very much for uh, visiting and I apologize that this month's video is a little bit uh, scattered here and there. I'm, I'm just trying to get it done before the too much of June passes by because it usually takes me a couple of days to, uh, to edit. So thank you very much to all who have, who are already our subscribers and to anyone who chooses to subscribe in the future. Please join in the Life LDC community and uh, have conversations down below and I'll try to answer any questions that you have. So until next time, happy knitting!